What's up guys and welcome to my new video. This time around I'll be showing you five things, five expensive things I picked up and which I did not regret buying and actually would repurchase if I would ever have to. Hope I don't have to because they are all freaking expensive, at least in my opinion. And yeah, I would just say let's get started. <music> start with number one number one is actually the biggest one uh, on this whole list and it's this baby here <sighs> this is my Remova Topa suitcase the XL one with the it has like a extra electronic tag on it as well and man this thing is huge but I love it I think they retail for around 850 euros and yo man, I had a very hard time picking this one up because I was debating with myself because you know when you go on an airplane and you have too much luggage, too much weight, uh, this thing doesn't come in that handy because the suitcase itself is already like 8 kilograms, but um, I just love the design so I picked it up and at the end of the day I do not regret it because it's so cool, you can actually ride on the through the entire airport on it. Um, that's a very fun thing to do. In addition to that, it's super sturdy and it just looks super premium. It is premium. And I went for the Topaz one itself, the classic one, uh, because this one is actually an alloy of magnesium and aluminium instead of the classic one, which does not have the magnesium in it, it's just aluminium. So I hope this one is a little more sturdy. It's by the way, the combination with the Lufthansa one, because I used to work at the airport, got it a little bit more off, and yeah. I love this suitcase, man. It's just this suitcase is legit one of the, my best purchases. For number two, I actually have um two things, and it is my watches. Now you probably think um those two watches. Now you probably think uh, these are not high-end premium. Those are no Rolexes, but um they are more expensive than you usually. Daniel Wellington or whatever and I'm just so happy I bought them because I wear one of them every day and they just like add so much to your outfit and they both of them are extremely classic so on one hand I have the Seiko Sarp well, let me focus that oops I have the Seiko Sarp 033 and on my other hand I have the oops Probably the most classic one, you know, when you wear a suit and tie, this, the Max Bill Young Hands. That's a German brand, and actually, basically, this watch is the one which all of the ones you're buying out there, like the Danny Wellingtons and the Skagen, and all of those, these are, this is the watch they actually be faking, so I just love that one. This is when I actually work or go like wear a shirt or well, like a suit attire and this is just like my everyday watch which I wear outside. This is actually an automatic, the Seiko is an automatic and this one retails for around 500. This one is also around 500 so yeah I think they're not premium exclusive Rolexes but um, they're just something I wear every day and I never regret buying. <laughs> Alright, okay so the next one probably is for most people the most crazy one because um, it is really expensive and you can pick up basically something similar for a tenth of the price and it is my Mont Blanc um, this is a fountain pen this is my Mont Blanc 146 from a Solitaire collection and I just love this fountain pen it is a piston filled fountain pen meaning um, you actually have to unscrew it and actually get some ink from an ink bucket like this and yeah it's just a writing tool um, if you don't know anything about Mont Blanc um, well they're actually a German company even though the mountain itself is in France it's the highest uh, mountain of the Alps and they make very good fountain pens so um, they've been doing this for ages and many leaders of the world like Putin and Merkel and like whatever they're all using um, actually 149 but the 149 is extremely thick and honestly my hands like I don't like something as thick as like a 
149. So I decided to get the 146 and I just love the gold detailing on it. Retails for 840 euros and that's a hell of a lot of price. So I think 840 or 750, something around there, 750 to 840. And you might ask like, why do you need it? You don't need something like this at all, but it is a cool thing to have actually. So I just like having nice things and when I buy something, I will usually want to get the best thing. And I think I really fulfilled this dream with this one. I mean, there are better fountain pens outside of the Mont Blanc range, but um, I have to say this is just like, this was kind of just like a dream of mine. And I picked it up and I don't regret buying it. I know like when you work, you can just put it in your like pocket square or whatever. And you see this little Mont Blanc, oh, this little Mont Blanc thing on the top. Yeah, it's a status symbol at the end of the day, but it is something I definitely do not regret because it's just so beautiful and it actually makes me want to write more and uh, not only writing, also it helps me studying because I love writing with nice things and when I study, I remember things best when I write them down and this is why I really love this Mont Blanc pen. Yeah, don't regret it. Alright, so for my next thing, um... Probably many guys don't even know what that is, but it is actually a Leica M3 with a Voigtlander lens, 50mm Nocturne, f1.5, yep, 1.5, I know my things. <laughs> so I wanted to get into film photography and I was debating with myself to get either an M6 or M3 and well, if you don't know anything about film photography, then just know this is probably one of the best bodies you can get for film photography. Um, the only different thing is, is film photography doesn't have a sensor. Your sensor is basically your 35mm film which you put inside. And yeah, so basically it doesn't really matter what kind of body you actually buy. But this one is just, it is already 60 years old. Can you imagine that this thing is 60 years old? It's crazy. Anyway, so this is 60 years old and I decided when I want to get into film photography, I want to do it properly. So I just decided to get uh, the nicest design because the, the nicer the design is, the more I actually use the things. And well, same thing with this Leica here and I love using it. It's such a nice feeling if you, you know, let me just make a photo so you will hear what I mean. Like, also, the good thing about it is you actually learn everything from scratch. So everything you have to do yourself, you have to put the shutter speed, you have to put obviously the film, so you decide the ISO with that, and you have to uh, get the what's it called, the f, the aperture you have to set, and you obviously have to focus as well. So. And you just go. Man, that sound, right? Yeah, I just love this thing. Oh, this is the single stroke one, there's the double stroke one as well. If you don't know anything about Leica's, just know this is a very nice film camera and it cost me, it cost me actually 600 euros. And um, I just love it, I have never regret buying this thing. And these things only go up in price as well, so um, invest one. If you're thinking about ever getting a Leica, just go get it and you will not regret it. All right, last but not least, uh, my favorite shoes actually, these are the Common Project Achilles Low Premium. Um, doesn't matter if they're premium or not, it's just like a white Common Project is bananas. Uh, they retail usually, the normal usually, usually retails for 360 euros and it is my favorite shoe of all time, my favorite sneaker. Um, I wear it, I just feel comfortable. I think it has to do with the shape of the shoe or something like that. Um, it is super minimalistic, but I remember when I first saw them, I was look. There was a comparison between Stan Smiths and them, and them, and I did not see the difference. I was like, why the heck would you pay 340 euros for a pair of shoes? But once you put them on, once you feel them, once you understand why these shoes are so freaking good, then you will understand why I love them so much. So, um, invest in a good pair of leather sneakers. I know that they're cheaper at all alternatives out there like Oliver Campbell and all these other things but honestly these are my favorite and nothing will beat them and yeah this is my second pair of the white ones already and I never regret actually picking them up man I just love them really recommend get a good pair of leather sneakers 
All right, that's actually it. Um, I guess I don't have that many expensive things, otherwise I would have made 10 things which I do not regret buying. There are actually some things which I do regret buying every now and then, but um, these things I just love. And I hope you also have some things. Share with me what you have, which you bought and which is expensive, but you still think at the end of the day it was kind of worth it. Yeah, anyways, I wish you have all have a beautiful and nice day. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Please subscribe, because um, my friends, they already bully me, because I don't have that many subscribers, so it would be fucking lit and bomb if you would subscribe. So thank you so much. Ciao.